What is an FPV drone? This is a question I get asked a lot, and one I often struggle with answering. My reply is usually, it's a drone with a low latency camera on the front that I can fly wearing goggles as though I am in the drone, you know like driving a car. But that really leads me into many bored expressions as I attempt to explain how this works, and how truly amazing this technology is. This video might be a bit basic for those educated FPV pilots, but I am hoping some amusement might come from my attempted teardown and rebuild of my beat-up freestyle quad. So, this is an FPV quadcopter, quad, or drone. To help understand the parts, I am going to use a living creature as an analogy. As an FPV drone is much like the living creatures we know. An FPV drone can be broken into nine specific body parts. 1. The skeletal system, or the frame. Lightweight carbon fiber and aluminium. 2. The eyes, or camera. Small compact wide-angle lens. 3. The appendages, or the motors. High-power brushless motors with plastic disposable props. 4 and 5. The spinal column. The video transmitter for sending the video feed to the pilot, and the receiver for receiving controls from the pilot via the controller. 6. The heart, or the electronic speed controller, a flat board that takes power from the battery and distributes it to the motors as needed. 7. The central nervous system, or the flight controller. Another flat board that computes the pilot's commands, runs all the background tasks for the powered components and flight characteristics. 8. The blood, or the battery. Not your average battery, high-powered and slightly explosive. 9. The brain, to complete the analogy, it's you, your brain, an actual human brain. Unlike standard drones, FPV drones cannot fly themselves. This drone has been sitting on the shelf for a while, as I've been flying smaller sized cine whoops. So I'm doing a tear down, clean and rebuild of this one. I'll talk about each of the components as I go, and demonstrate some of the required skills and methods, as well as some quick fixes and hacks. So here we have an iFlight frame, crashed and repaired many times. Emax Eco Motors, cheap but not bad. CL Racing F7 flight controller, and a 45 amp electronic speed controller. TBS Unify VTX, spectrum receiver and a run cam camera. First thing is to record where everything goes with my phone, unplug everything and then take all the electronics off the frame. If we want to go existential we can see other similarities with life. The speed in which these creatures are evolving is mind-blowing, adding another entire dimension to our own existence, and through the interaction with pleasure senses in the brain, are prompting their own growth. FPV is an extension of our own lives via a symbiotic relationship with our drone parasites. Natural Human Non-Biological Evolution After unplugging the camera, VTX and receiver, we have to remove the motor screws. You need to be careful when removing the stack nuts, it's easy to knock delicate components off the FC. Now we can just unplug the FC from the ESC, and we're good to remove the last components. Leaving us with one dirty assed frame. Here's the flight controller, or FC. All other components connect here. The FC is programmed via software on the computer, like Betaflight, The ESC is a power distribution board for the motors, the battery plugs in here. The ESC powers the FC, and they communicate commands. 
Now I'm going to remove all the components off the flight controller, starting with the VTX. With a hot and clean soldering iron, it's as easy as just gently touching the points. Just the tip. Just the tip? I'm removing the camera now. Signal, then ground, and then power. Everything has its place. Last of all is the receiver. Red for power, black for ground, and yellow for signal. Too easy. Repairing wires via splicing is often a necessity. As I'm all out of small shrink tube, each wire was wrapped with Kapton tape and sheathed in a larger size. Once the flight controller is clean, it's time to start putting the wires back in their correct spots. Being sure to make a good contact for each point. Remember to have both the wires and the pads pre-tinned. Soldering is nothing to be afraid of. It takes a little practice but is really quite easy. After a little soap and water, the fame looks a lot nicer. Wait, let's go back a bit. No, this is not some crappy DJI shell. This is my own invention. The Stack Shack. Really just a prototype at this point, but I'm hoping it can keep everything clean, and in later versions, eventually dry. Both the ESC and FC easily fit the box, with indents for the battery strap in the lid. A level of protection unseen in racing and freestyle quads. Future versions will include an extended section for the cap and battery connection. As well as a modular motor wire passed through, to stop leaks. Well, it is a prototype. Now my only regret is printing it in gray. Truly, I'm not a DJI fanboy. It's just what I had in the printer. Okay, so that's it, my quad is clean and complete. I installed the camera, VTX and receiver off camera, but they just plug in so there is no inherent interest. After a first test flight, everything seems in working order. Now to go and tear this thing a new butthole, and see how my stack shack holds up. In the next video I'll be demonstrating how to get started in FPV, what equipment you might need, safety, and how to start practicing to become an FPV pilot. I'll also be flight testing the stack shack in several messy conditions. Fingers crossed. Remember to please subscribe, and if you're interested in the stack shack, let me know in the comments.